Hi, my name is Mick DeBetter. I'm here to talk about a, a brief overview of my training philosophy as we watch uh, one of my training sessions underway here today with a uh, battle to paddle style training session. With anything that it works well and works on it consistently over a long period of time, takes experience and also a lot of research. I researched a lot of sports, uh, paddling sports at Olympic level, swimming sports, spoken to elite level and Olympic coaches and combine that with my experience in paddling uh, events, distance events or sprint events, and combine that with uh, the scientific data that's available and come up with the program that I think uh, seems to work quite consistently. There you go, you see the guys sprinting off the beach at the start of the uh, effort and they'll be using their lactate system right now and hopefully they'll be able to maintain it for the duration of the effort. There's a lot of different philosophies out there on putting a training program together and uh, what combinations of the different energy systems should be used and what proportions in a training program. But through my experience uh, using the perceived exertion in races and in training and feedback from elite uh, athletes that I coach, I find using the uh, lactate threshold training program is much more specific to uh, improving a race pace for any uh, duration, uh, whether it be short races or long races. Once we've got the combination of the energy systems, the volume and the rest periods that we're going to use in a training program, we have to use a scale of the intensity. And the intensity scale that, that I like to use is the rating of perceived exertion, something that we use in our everyday life and every athlete would uh, be aware of it, even though they probably aren't using it in their program. But it's a scale of 1 to 20, whereas 1 to 10 would be your everyday activities like shopping maybe a 5 or a 6 and watching TV might be a 1 or a 2. But in our training, we use 11 to 20. 11 and 12 being a, a, a feeling of feeling comfortable, like talking pace, something that we may call 60% of our maximum effort. Then we go to 13 to 15, which is a feeling of somewhat hard to hard. And in that upper end of that scale, around 15, 16, we would find our race pace. 15 to 18, which shorter intervals, was, these intervals should feel hard, very hard. And uh, then we go from there to 19 to 20, which is periods of all out efforts up to around 60 seconds, long rest, a minimum of three to one rest period. I guess the traditional VO2 max or the maximum oxygen uptake has been viewed as a key component to success in prolonged exercise activities or endurance events. However, I think recently scientists have reported that the lactic threshold is the most consistent predictor of performance in endurance events. And I see studies have repeatedly found correlation between performance in endurance events and the maximum steady state workloads at lactate threshold or race pace. So if we combine interval training workouts at high intensity training sessions performed for short durations of time at velocities or workloads above and below lactate threshold, we should get some improvement in our race pace. We use two types of intense intervals, the lactate tolerance, which they're doing in this set, where they do two minutes above race pace at 15 to 18 with 20 seconds of non-activity to tolerate the lactate and then take it through into the next two minutes and so on. In the uh, lactate threshold sessions of longer durations with uh, longer active recoveries between each duration, it builds volume in the training program and it's good for those long paddles and molecules. Hopefully I've made some sense and helped you out with your training program. If you need more information, please contact us.